Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1945, Part 11. This was orig originally published as Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC number 17, published on April 1st, 1996. 667 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, April 17th, 1945. Dearest Mother, this is a continuation. Just one thing, the chief, the chief supervisor is Mr. Williams, not Miss Inkster, who is the supervising teacher. Quite a difference. Not that that matters to the public. Then Miss Kirkham is not a teacher, and who teaches the children to sign, but Moffat. Nice oral school we have. It just proves that one ink spot makes everything else dirty with it. So 13 teachers are wrong and one right. Anyway, at 4 o'clock today, six of us went to Inky to protest. She seemed glad we came and said she felt she had some backing to protest to Dr. Anderson. Not that it'll do any good. The story's written now. We met this Marjorie Jones, but briefly. Apparently, Moffat's room was the only one really observed. Inky left her five minutes in Moffat's room. Five minutes too long, apparently. Now, this is strictly private, because I'll get in Dutch if it gets out. But our visiting committee, which includes Dr. Laycock, did not approve of Moffat teaching little children. So maybe they'll superannuate her early, I hope. And I might as well give me a bit, bit of credit since I didn't get any in, in print. I can't even tell Marion this because Inky said the committee's findings were supposed to be secret. Dr. Anderson told us before, and I told you, I guess, anyway. Inky said the committee couldn't speak highly enough of, quote, Beth's and my teaching, and we were the only two given special mention. That was the day before I went to Estevan. It helps, but who gets credit in the newspaper? Moffat, who anyone can tell is... Oh, anyway, I hope this comes to a showdown. Inky said she'd resign as supervising teacher if something didn't happen to make Moffat keep in her place. She made life hell for Pridmore, got her out, and would love to see Inky out, too. I ought to rip this up now. I've got it out of my system, but I'd like you to know that story wasn't approved of as far as the majority were concerned. You should have seen the look on her face. Cat swallowed the canary or cream or something. Really, at risk of laying myself open, Moffat's not a good teacher. Maybe for 13 years ago, okay. Discipline, sure. Poor little kids set up all right. But love, happiness, interest, encouragement, or even good material? No. Dr. Laycock tried to show her how to make her lesson more interesting. Did she get mad? Probably that speech reading described in the paper was a rare one in her room. Okay, Ruth, you can shut up any time now. I'm just bored to death with working, teaching now for two years, and then something like that comes up. Why bother teaching oral at all if no one believes it anyway? I'm going down east this summer and get any job. Well, anyway, I'd like to do something. Jeepers, the Department of Education now wants us to go to the United States for summer school. Spend $250 on a course in oral to come back to a school that... Marion just made the most delicious cream fudge with raisins in it. Oh, I love it. She's just trying to pacify me. Really enjoyed the symphony, last of the season. Two of my favorite pieces, the Emperor Waltz and the Knight's Bridge March. Just wash my hair, so I'll have to dry it now. My circus scenery really are looking nice, especially the clown. He's about seven feet high. I get the most enjoyment out of those periods. I think I'll have to try to get a job in that line. How are you? I bet you're going to be mighty busy in the next two weeks. Heard where 2,000 Regina families are ganging up so not to move. I rather envy Buddy Smith. He's flying to Regina Thursday night. I should have done that sometime. 
Of course, the kids tell me now I, I have so much money I should too. That's another thing. May 1st we should be getting a raise. Boy, and we better. I've had a drawing bug again, and the place is smothered in girls again. Just cleaned them all away a while ago. Good night now. Thanks for being there. I'd die if I was an orphan on top of it all. Love, Ruth. 667 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. April 22, 1945. Dearest Mother, Hello, dear. I really enjoyed your letters, and thanks especially for the bit of advice on how to take things. I really know you're right, and possibly by my letter it did sound rather as if it were getting me down. It did a bit, but I got it out of my system by telling you about it, dear. That's one of the things I mean when I say thanks for just being there. Anyway, the story is getting a wind-up. Inky told Dr. Anderson that the six of us had complained, so he told her to write a correction. Then he came around to the rooms. I was the only one he talked to, I gather, but he said that my room was one of the best rooms for speech. So I said that all of us young teachers used nothing but speech. Long conversations, all okay. Well, comes the payoff. I finished the scenery, four sections each, about seven feet by four feet. Two were clowns, one a seal on a barrel balancing a ball on its nose, and the fourth a monkey on a ball with balloons up from its tail. Anyway, no matter what it sounds like, everyone seemed to like them, and I got compliments all over the place. Thursday, the two women came to look at them and really raved about them. Inky said they phoned her again and said they were so pleased and never expected anything so good. They're sending 25 tickets for the show so that the kids who worked on them can see it. You see, I outlined them, and Marion's class and Marge's class painted them in the art period. It runs for three nights. So each, Marge, Marion, and I would take about eight a night. Well, Inky came into my room after the women left. She was so mad she had to sit down. If you can imagine, Mrs. Moffat had gone to the women and offered to take the children up one night. And she hadn't done a thing, yet there she was, ready to take credit for the school. Anyway, Inky straightened it out so she won't go with the kids. Has that Moffat ever got nerve? No, the picture was ho- a horrible one of Inky. So that's a part of the stuff that goes on. Well, Mr. Downer asked me to give my little talk to about 25 to 30 at a St. John's Ambulance Group, May 9th. I haven't accepted as I really don't know what to make of it. I said, why, Mr. Downer, I have never given a talk to women. He said, who was it to, men? What do you think? Mrs. Downer asked me if I'd take the children Friday night and go with them in the car. Nice, eh? To this play. I think I'll go Wednesday, though. Easiest solution I know to get out of something. Last Monday, this kid... The president of the university's son asked me out. I said, no, I don't like him. Tuesday, I told the kids, teachers at school, I'd go out with the next guy that asked me, no matter who, mostly kidding, and never dreaming he'd phone again Wednesday. I said, maybe next Wednesday, and now I want to get out of it. He talked for about an hour on the telephone Thursday night. Good thing Pop wasn't there. Yes, dear, Frank's gone after that last dance he got his posting. It was nice while he was here, though. It's been very dead since, which led me to make the statement I'd go out with the next guy. Will you forgive me for something? Is it the first or the end of May you'll be moving? Oh, and I won't have anything to do with the wedding except hear about it, I expect. I've sure slipped on a lot of counts lately. I'll have to do something about it when I discover the error of my ways. I don't remember that girl. I expect about now you'll have them there. It sounds like a good idea for a couple of kids to get an invitation to Sunday supper. What's the date I have to have those police cards made? And is there any special emblem you'd like on them? Sorry to hear about Rose's nephew. Another girl's going to end up with a career and nothing else. That's about all for now, my honey dear. Marion's planning on going home next weekend. 
if the snow ever stops. Oh, Saskatchewan, I love your March springs and April winters. Bye, dear. I love you, and I'll come home any... Well, I'll come if you want me. Ozzie and Harriet, cute. Love, Ruthie. 667 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. May 20th, 1945. Dear Mother, Hello, darling. Did you miss me this weekend? Because I certainly thought a lot about you. Did I tell you I had a nice time when I was home? And since then I felt a lot better about everything. I went to church this morning, and for the first time in a long time I felt like a good girl inside. And right now I am at peace with the world again. Something like getting over an operation. Hope I can stay this way. Everything's going to work out all right, I hope. Beth and I found out from the bank that we can take $250 into the United States without any trouble, and we think we'll take it in traveler's checks to be okay. Also, we can go see P to Regina from 4 to 9 a.m. and then on to Windsor. That's with the understanding that we get our visas okay. Also, Mrs. Holtby has started on my jersey dress, blouse, and so I feel a bit better that way. Then I'll start clearing things up at school, too, this week. I discovered I was getting quite edgy at school, so had a sleep yesterday afternoon, and just finished another one now, and will try to go to bed early every night from now on, unless for a good reason. Nothing like good resolutions, anyway, but I do want to keep well. Marge, the other girl going with us, has been in bed for a week with the flu, but will be better. Oh, please, Mom, if you can, get me a set of grips, one large and one small in black, and I'll pay you later. There's absolutely nothing here. I do hope they aren't all gone. Let me know very soon, please. I enjoyed your letter yesterday and glad you've done a few things. I'll tell J.M. about the place cards, too. How about ordering blinds from Eaton's or that other place you mentioned? Also, if you haven't your curtains yet... I thought this a cute idea. One gathered crisscross one way, and the other opposite on either side of the fireplace, and the other plain or double crisscross. Think about it, eh? Oh, I forgot my bobby pins along with my pajamas, so maybe you can send them too. Do you remember I mentioned one of my pupils had a brother in Germany? He sent me some Dutch money. Chuck gave Marion a Belgian quarter. He came Friday on leave. He took us to a dance last night. Really nice. Oh, we don't get a holiday tomorrow. Maybe you don't need to send me the pajamas if it'll be a bother. I'm using MMS body pins, so need mine. I'll say bye for now. I love you very much, and I'll write again. Love, Ruthie. P.S. The butter coupons are from Mrs. Stewart. Love, Ruthie. 667 University Drive. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, September 7th, 1945. Dear Mother, So here we are back in the same old groove again. We're sort of half settled again, both at home and school. I made the trip back okay, took a taxi home, and halfway here discovered I'd left my wallet under my pillow, so went back for it. School's the same as ever. I've still got the third level. Beth got the beginners, and Moffat, yes, got her same group again. I have 11 so far, six boys, including the Indian again. They're quite a nice bunch and the ones I wanted. And we've laid a supply of grub in here, so it looks like we're here for the winter. But then you never can tell. And how's Bud coming at school? If you see Connie, thank her for me for driving me to the station. It was pretty nice. Sam and a couple of other deaf boys were at the station to see me off. Just he and Connie came through to the train, though. We have a couple of new teachers, and Archie Leard is back from overseas. Inky asked me if I'd teach art, and I said I wouldn't. Some of the kids came and asked me to please teach art. I think I'll teach Johnson's, maybe. It's very difficult writing because the ink's dry. I'll get some and maybe write again Sunday. I thought I'd better let you know I was still existing. So bye for now. Love, Ruth. P.S. Wish I were in Michigan. 
Beth and I are going to New York for a course, maybe. The poll tax is $5. Room 117, School for the Deaf, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. September 21st, 1945. Age 21. Dearest Mother, Hello, my darling little mommy. Are you ever swell? I really like my birthday present from you so much. I think they're just lovely and have them on now and Buddy's present too. Simply perfect. I was really very tickled with them both and think I'm about the luckiest girl. This is just a note as I'm writing it at recess. I knew I wouldn't have much time later and wanted you to know everything was okay. I really had a swell birthday. Marion had a real party for me, cake, 21 candles, everything. One of the boys was getting his discharge today, so made it a real party, and we went to a dance after. I'll tell you the details later. Editor's note, the Second World War had ended a few weeks earlier. Quite the thing to be 21. Now maybe I'd really better start to grow up. I love you very much. Thanks, Pop and Buddy. I love that old maid part, Bud. Love, Ruthie. 667 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. September 23rd, 1945. Dearest Mother, Hello there, you wonderful woman, you. How does it feel to have a daughter old enough to vote? Or do we just forget about that from now on? Well, I'm not exactly crazy about the idea myself, because it's about, it's about time I had something to show for these years of toil. So I guess it's about time I began acting my age, if possible. It's quite the life, though. Of course, everyone at school, from our dear bursar to the engineers, and of course the kiddies, all wished me happy birthday. Mr. Downer came in the morning and said he wished the children weren't there, so he could do it properly. The old... Hmm... So at noon he called me and said I was wanted in my room. I didn't go. He waited up there about 15 minutes. I guess he was pretty mad, but come 4 o'clock and he was back again. Honestly, of all the trouble. He never noticed Beth in the room and was just going to make it good. So I turned and got a cheek full of mustache. I don't know how the janitors even knew, but they all stood in the door and sang... She's 21, 21, she's 21 today. To think I've been there since I was 18, long enough. Now a $5 poll tax and I can vote. Well, as, well, as I said, Marion had a really swell little party for me. A cake with Happy Birthday Ruth and I blew out all 21 candles. So I'd better get that wish. Chuck bought the groceries and a bottle of olives for me. One of the kids was getting his discharge Friday, so they were really celebrating. It was a lot of fun, and we went dancing. Marshall phoned in the middle of the party. Marion took matters into her own hands and said I was out. As a matter of fact, he's phoned every night this week. He didn't know when my birthday was exactly, but asked if I'd like to have a party at his place. Anyway, he asked me where I was when he phoned the next night. Lloyd was over for supper, and Marshall kept asking questions. He asked me to go to the cap with him, and when I said I couldn't, he said he'd phone me next month. It's really getting past the corny stage. Anyway, the kids took Marion and I to the show at the cap. Incendiary blonde. Did it snow down there? So help me, what a country. Just because it's been called the first day of winter on September 21st, it snowed all day and has been raining ever since. We've got pans all over the garage. It leaks this year. Well, honey bun, I'll say bye again and thanks a million for my birthday presents. Sure enough, swell. I love you. Hi, poppin' buddy. Love, Ruthie. 667 University Drive, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. October 18th, 1945. Dearest Mother, but definitely nice of you to send on the things I forgot in my mad rush. I was really hoping that you would think of it before I asked, and I certainly did need them. My one pair of stockings was beginning to show signs of needing relief. <coughs> 
I'd wash them, then hope like anything they'd be ready to go again. Quite the life, but it's okay now, so thanks. I was beginning to wonder whether it was worthwhile to leave in the morning, after all, when I had such a time getting away. I could have taken more time, as I had to wait at the station to get on the train, and the taxi driver said it was okay as they weren't rushed. Anyway, I felt so much better for going up in the daytime that I really think it's better, and now I dread the thought of another midnight ride. My kitties are doing arithmetic at the moment, so all's quiet for a couple of minutes anyway. They're a sweet bunch, and we're getting along swell. A couple were at the door when I came down the hall, and when they saw me, they nearly went into hyst hysterics. And by the time I get, got in, they nearly mobbed me. Gee, it was swell. How could I help but be glad to be back? So they told me, happy I'm better, and better me than the other teachers, etc., so blarney, I loved it. They're pretty good. So smart little Ruthie didn't get out of the field day after all. We had it yesterday, and what a day. It was rather windy and cold. They gave me a nice job, though, pinning on the first red ribbons. The only trouble was that they kept their eye on me, so I w wouldn't sneak one to Gilbert and Gordon. Darn. Well, I'm home again and hope to get this away before six. Taught Sunday school after four. Funny, but I'm starting to get the old kick out of teaching again. So happy. Marion had gone home for the weekend, but about a half hour after I got home, one of the fellows I met on the train phoned and said he decided to stay in Saskatoon and catch the train to his home the next day. So he came in a taxi. We kept it waiting, too. And he took me to supper. Really nice. Like him quite a bit. Oh yes, Marshall. Phone, Marshall wished he'd know I was in. He'd know I was in Sunday. I didn't. So Tuesday he asked me to go to a show, dancing or bowling, but I wouldn't. He came over anyway and said he'd missed me and wished I'd go out with him every night of the week. Holy Dinah, sure corny. Monday we went bowling and a friend of Marion's petty officer asked me to go to a party with him. I'm not. I had a good time on the train, thought I was back in the United States again. After our field day, we had a celebration on the occasion of Downer's 14th wedding anniversary. For myself, a new pair of shoes, suede bows on top like before. I like them, and they're very comfortable. I got my shoes from the shoemaker, so I feel better teaching. Our visiting committee came Monday, and the kitties were good. It was good to get back and get the mail. Frank's in Germany now. He thought his leave meant home, but it didn't. Bonnie's going on a concert tour of Manitoba for the U loan. Jack says he'll be up to Saskatoon, but I bet I see the States before he sees Saskatoon. Well, thanks again for the parcel. Take care of yourself. Love, Ruth. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.